new methods of supplying the army reflect the whole spirit of change and adjustment. The division of World War II was tied to its supply lines. It could not operate when these lines were cut. Highways and railroad lines are static, too open to attack. Once a supply train has been devastated, the problem of repairing the tracks is compounded by the need to clean up the debris and the ruined supplies themselves. Harbors are equally vulnerable and useless after direct hits when channels and dock space may be clogged for weeks. All the Army's training, its weapons and supply efforts are aimed at the ultimate purpose of assisting the American soldier in combat to meet the enemy's forces and to defeat or destroy them. The battle groups of the future, as they are being organized today, will be able to fight with only the supplies they can get by air. Thanks to the parachute and the helicopter, the word beachhead may be erased from the fighting man's vocabulary. Just as the atom is changing the principles of attack, it is also giving new meaning to the words dispersion and mobility. Following a close-in atomic attack, troops drop in on the enemy in a vertical envelopment. The advantages of surprise, swiftness, and widespread force work well for the airborne infantrymen. Because a small atom bomb could virtually sink an airfield as well as a carrier, great emphasis is being put on vertical takeoff aircraft. But no matter what the form of transportation, the underlying theme is the same. The machines exist to move the men. The men who man the machines function primarily to move the foot soldiers. freed, in part, of the slower, more vulnerable avenues of supply offered by highway, rail, and ship, the new attack teams receive weapons, ammunition, and supplies by air. By using new weapons and revolutionary methods of attack and supply, conventional U.S. ground forces are rendered more powerful, man for man, than those of any enemy.